So when I was about 15 years old, I think I was shopping at a Barnes and Noble one day and I saw this book sitting on a shelf and I thought to myself, this is super cool. 100 Deadly Skills. I mean, this is the type of thing you could imagine a 15 year old boy might be interested in, right? I played paintball, I played airsoft, I thought maybe I'd join the military one day. 100 Deadly Skills. I bought this book, I think it was, it says on the back, it was about $20 unless it was discounted or something that day. It's written by a retired Navy SEAL, uh, let's see, retired Navy SEAL, Clint Emerson, who spent 20 years conducting special ops all over the world while attached to SEAL Team 3, the National Security Agency, and the elite SEAL Team 6. So, I mean, clearly this guy doesn't mess around, right? Like this, if you're gonna buy a book from anyone, it's gonna teach you a hundred deadly skills, the types of things that a Navy SEAL might know. Should be, you know, you buy this book from this guy. I don't think I really thought too much about it until this morning when I was flipping through my little library here and um, flipping through this book, I saw something that means a bit more to me now than it did when I was 15. So there's this page here, this one particular page I'd like to, I'd like to point to, I'd like to call out. It talks about how to cross an enemy border by air. And you can see the description, the step-by-step -step instructions, which is a hallmark of this book, right? Many of these entries include kind of like step-by-step -step instructions or like a breakdown of how a particular skill should work with the idea, I think, being, right? This is certainly how I took it when I bought it that you're gonna learn this skill. Maybe not, maybe you're not gonna be a master in this skill, right? But you're gonna learn something useful by reading these, right? Get, get your tips, learn how to install an audio device. You know, picking a lock, let's see. You know, here's some basics on the impression, on impressioning a lock. Like, you get the idea. It, it's not supposed to be like a fantasy, right? It's not. Like, at least that's not how it's sold. It's sold as useful information. And I think it's so important to call out, again, before we get into this any deeper, that you know, on the front and also on the back, right? We have the author, Clint Emerson, Navy SEAL, retired. That, that is being used to sell this as reality, right? It's not Clint Emerson, fictional author who writes interesting books you will enjoy the pictures in. It's Clint Emerson, Navy SEAL, who's been doing special ops around the world for 20 years. So here's his instructions for various skills that he knows that you don't, a hundred of them, deadly ones even. Um, here's the instructions you can learn from him. That's what it's sold as, let's be clear. Let's be very clear. That's what it's sold as. So I skydive now. Uh, I've been skydiving for skydiving since the end of 2017 on and off. Um, I am not the most experienced skydiver in the world by a long shot, right? There are folks out there that just blow me away when it comes to their skill, their experience. But I am experienced enough to know that this is crap. <laughs> I mean, this is just total trash right here. This was not, I, Navy SEALs, especially, let's see, Navy SEALs attached to SEAL Team 3, the National Security Agency, and the elite SEAL Team 6 are supposed to know a thing or two about what's called in the military, military free fall. They're supposed to know. Uh, and then they write something like this. I, it, it leaves me, I'll get into why I think it's crap. But I have to say, it leaves me wondering, one, whether Clint Emerson actually wrote this or, or proofread it. Maybe somebody else wrote it for him. He never proofread it to double check it wasn't crap. Uh, you know, or maybe he's writing it as, you know, it's kind of a fantasy, right? He knows you're buying a fantasy. It's, you know, come on, you want to learn from a Navy SEAL, right? Well, you're not going to learn anything in this book but you wanna see some cool pictures, you could imagine, maybe you could do this. <laughs> I, think, I think it's that. I'm gonna be honest, I think Clint did write this, although I don't know. Um, I see no indication that he didn't. Um, 
I think he's writing this to be cool. I think he wants you to open this up and say, wow, that's so cool. You could get in a Cessna, a little plane, and then you could fly a wingsuit over the border into enemy territory. Like, yeah. Technically, some of this is roughly possible, right? Like, yes, people fly wingsuits out of airplanes. Yes, you could fly a wingsuit out of an airplane across a border. I don't think it's even remotely that simple. And I say this because I understand some of the complexities of doing this sorts of stuff. Maybe Clint doesn't. Like, maybe, maybe Clint was supporting SEAL Team 6. Maybe Clint doesn't actually jump or has maybe jumped, you know, maybe done his five jumps at airborne school, but never done military freefall. I don't know, but I know that this is crap. So let's, let's get into it. You can see the step-by-step -step instructions, the breakdown on how you would cross into enemy territory on your wingsuit. He wants us to steal an airplane, turn off the transponder. Uh, apparently, if you, read, if you read the details over here, I think we fly within 12 miles of the, uh, the border over the ocean uh, because, you know, technically that's like, that's, that's not their territory, I guess. Clint, my friend, if you were really in the military, have you ever heard of an air defense, air defense identification zone? Uh, yes, even if you're over the ocean, technically, like on the other side of their border, like the, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, right? Yet they're still like tracking you. I mean, in many cases. I mean, in some cases, maybe they're not, right? Maybe they've got no radars, they've got no air defense. In which case, fly the plane over the border if you're gonna be the, the dangerous, deadly nomad this book is gonna, is gonna teach you to be. Just fly the plane over the border, my friend. What are you doing? Well, I guess we're talking about, you know, this, this, these are the instructions that a Navy SEAL would use, right? To cross a real heavily guarded border so they must have, you know, let's assume they have an air force. They got fighter jets. They got, you know, surface to air missiles. They've got an air defense identification zone. They are tracking you even if you're just on the other side of the border, right? They might even scramble someone to come intercept you while you're, let's see, what are we supposed to be doing? Turning off our radios, lights, and transponder. For the record, turning off your radio doesn't stop radar from tracking you. But Clint, you know that, don't you? You're just writing this for fun. You don't care whether or not it's accurate at all, do you? And it's not. Let's keep going. Um, apparently, you're going to trim the aircraft so that it flies straight and level. And I think we're supposed to point it out towards a rural area or out to sea. And then we're just going to jump out in our, in our wingsuit right here. In skydiving, you don't even jump a wingsuit, at least in the States, until you have had 200 jumps, 200 like regular non-wingsuited skydives minimum. But I think, you know, somebody reading this book could get the impression that it's possible to just strap on a wingsuit, you know, just like it's possible to, I guess, make a Molotov cocktail, right? You could also get the impression that it's possible to just strap on a wingsuit and go. I think there's one brief note up here that an infiltration by air is generally for trained operatives. I think he says for trained operatives. Yeah, okay. Um, then what is the point of putting it in this book? Right? I, I thought this, this book's not supposed to be like a sideshow, right? It's not supposed to be like a, here's a cool thing that trained operatives can do. It's supposed to be a hundred deadly skills that you're going to learn, right? That's how it's marketed. That's why people are buying it. They're not buying it to be like a hundred deadly things that the Navy SEALs sometimes do, right? I think 15 year olds, 25 year olds, I don't know, wanna buy this book to learn something. That's why you have step-by-step -step breakdowns, right? You know that, I think Clint knows that that's what he's doing. That's why there's a breakdown. That's why there's instructions, but it's not real. It's a fantasy, keep that in mind. Okay, so you're gonna jump out of the airplane. Know how the door is just open? even though in reality, wind would be, you know, depending on the speed you're going, you know, 100 knots or whatever, the wind's gonna slam that door shut unless you've got some way to hold it open. That kind of just shows you the lack of attention to detail here. 
and again, indicates that Clint has no idea what he's talking about. For the record, Navy SEALs don't just automatically know everything because they're Navy SEALs. It's like really cool to be a Navy SEAL and all that. It does not make you an expert in things. I think Clint sells, even in the back of the book, he describes, uh, there's something, I think he sells like, here, yeah, here's a link to Escape the Wolf, the author's corporate security and crisis solutions firm. Based on what I'm reading right here, I think Clint's corporate security uh, and crisis solutions might, might not be uh, as good as he is trying to sell you on it being. Because this right here is crap. For the record, I haven't dug deeply into the rest of it. There's probably a lot of crap in here. Okay, so the door shouldn't be open like that. It's also very hard to open a door like that at all. It's not just that the window below it shut when you opened it. It would be hard to open it at all in the first place. Possible. I'm not saying it's impossible, it's possible, but it's hard. And it's best accomplished when you've got a pilot who can help you with some rudder to kind of like turn the, kind of slide the plane through the air so there's less wind on that door. Um, most skydiving planes have a special door that doesn't open into the wind like that. It pops up, uh, at least these, these types of planes, right? Um, it'll like pop up. So it's got less of that, that air resistance trying to close it again you're not gonna easily just like trim the plane, turn off your radio, and then just open the door and jump out. It's just not how it works at all. Um, I like this point right here as well. He calls it a shoot. Clint, I don't think you jump. I might, I don't know. I have no idea, I don't know you, but I don't think you jump. Yeah, I've heard skydivers use the term shoot before. I've used the term shoot before, but skydivers, on average, in my experience, tend to use the word canopy to describe their parachute, especially when it's a ram air parachute like this. Uh, shoot is often used to describe the rounder parachutes that you see uh, like, you know, traditional paratroopers jumping. Maybe Clint is more familiar with that type of skydiving. It is a type um, and not with the like military free fall skydiving where it would be more likely in my experience, I'm putting caveats here because this is a nitpick, more likely in my experience, he would call it a canopy and not a shoot. Everyone, you walk to a random person on the street who's never jumped in their life and they call it a shoot. And skydivers tend to call it a canopy. I, I, it's not proof of anything, right? But it is awfully suspicious to see that right here. Um, I think it's interesting, again, that the idea is we're going to jump out of an airplane and fly across the border and the airplane's going to like crash behind us. But somehow that's stealthier, I guess. You're probably going to, you know, this is American or whatever, right? I mean, this, this is a white guy right here. I think he's going he's gonna to fly into Nicaragua or something. I don't know, man. And he's going to be like, you know, the only white guy wandering around the field where the plane just crashed like in his, in his blending clothes. You really think that's gonna work? Good luck with that. Um, let's also talk about this. I think this is where it's like really, really clear that this man does not know what he's talking about, has not done his homework, or at a minimum is just a, a big klutz of a person. So he describes right here with great confidence um, and he's giving that confidence to you because he's a Navy SEAL and you're gonna learn something from him, right? When jumping from a moving aircraft with, in a wingsuit made out of a non-porous nylon, it says every two and a half feet dropped, every two and a half feet dropped means a simultaneous gain of one foot of forward glide. He has the right numbers. He has the backwards. It's actually for every one foot dropped, you go forward two and a half feet. And that's an average number for like the average wingsuit it's very approximate. It, it changes based on body type, wingsuit design, certain conditions. But yeah, that is, that is like the average is about one down, 2.5 forward roughly. Um, but he's got it backwards. He says it's 2.5 down, one forward. That right there, unless that is just a giant error, which is always possible, really makes me think that Clint doesn't have a clue and just like briefly looked this up online while he was writing 
you know, got somebody or maybe he drew some cool pictures and is trying to sell you a fantasy based on the fact that he's a Navy SEAL, buddy. Um, the other thing that is really just, really just quite funny, actually, is um, he says, so, uh, based, uh, so parachuting is a slow moving and much more visible proposition. So a nomad should wait until the last possible minute to activate his shoot. You remember like the first Point Break film? There was like that the skydiving scene where uh, like Johnny Utah and Bodie are like gra they've like grabbed onto each other and they're trying to play like like chicken with who's gonna deploy their their parachute first and um, something like they're like oh they're like checking out tremors like We're, we only got five hundred feet to go five hundred feet quick deploy you first they're like having an argument in free fall first off an argument in free fall good luck with that it's very loud um, but like 500 feet to go all right deploy you don't deploy at 500 feet first off if you're at 500 feet and you're in free fall you don't finish that sentence you are in the ground before that sentence is done you're falling at 130 miles per hour that's 2.5 seconds approximately to cover 500 feet so you're at 500 feet terminal velocity 2.5 seconds one two you just impacted that's it so that's just silly right it's silly it's movie magic but that's the joke, right? It's like, no, I'll pull my parachute at the last possible second. That's what this guy tells you to do. Oh, pull your parachute at the last possible second. Then you'll get safely into enemy territory. That is stupid. This is a stupid person. Or this is a liar. I mean, is this a stupid person? Or this is a liar who wants you to buy his book and wants to make lots of money and he's a fraud, right? I mean, he's selling a lie to you. Pull your parachute at the last possible moment. I think that's what it is, right? Is like, this is a fantasy that he is like a fantasy idea. You no, know, he doesn't think anybody's going to actually ever do any of these things. And I really hope that that's the case. I hope nobody takes these, <laughs> this advice, but it is, you have to understand this book is marketed that way. It's not marketed as like a fantasy idea, right? It is marketed to people as in like, buy this and you'll learn something. I'm a Navy SEAL. And that's super deceptive and really uncool. And very, actually very uncool, in fact. Um, that's why I'm making this video and calling it out as crap. It's crap. Clint Emerson, in my opinion, is a fraud of a person. Um, I mean, maybe this is true. Maybe all of his stuff right here is true. But what he writes is deceptive and designed to just make money off of you and make himself seem cool. Uh, yeah, no, you don't want to deploy your parachute at the last possible second. There's a certain range that you want to deploy it in if you're doing a wingsuit jump into enemy territory. Um, you need a fair amount of altitude still to try and stave off the possibility of disaster upon deployment. Um, not the la no, You're not sitting there. You know, his instructions imply that you're sitting there kind of, okay, hold on, I'm getting in close, you know, in your little wingsuit. All right. Oh, the ground's really coming at me. <laughs> I better deploy right or soon, but I don't want to be seen on radar. You're not going to be seen on radar. You're a wingsuit, dude. Even a canopies are not particularly large either, especially if you're relatively low. This is silly. I mean, yeah, like I think that people can do this. I'm sure this has been done, right? But not like this. And this book, this book really peeves me because it's trying to sell something that it's clearly not. Clint, if you are watching this video, I challenge you to come forward. Show me proof that you actually know anything about skydiving. And I don't mean jumping static line rounds. I mean, that's cool, but I, it's not what you're describing in here. I want to see a video of you in a wingsuit. I want to see a video of you even just in free fall. Uh, maybe not strapped to another person. Don't just go do a tandem jump. Send me proof that you actually know what you're talking about. And explain to me why you thought it was cool to write this. I don't think it's very cool. I think you're selling a lie to people. So maybe you think it's cool. It's just a fantasy to you. That's how you've thought it through. I think you're kind of a liar. But I'm willing to be proven wrong. Uh, or I'm willing, to, I'm willing to take discussion about it. Um, feel free to hit me up. You can drop a comment. DM me. I'm around. All right.